Let's bring in Colin Robertson, a former Canadian diplomat. And, uh, and Colin, uh, from your perspective, uh, with that expertise as a diplomat, first of all, are you surprised by how quickly things moved over the last 12 hours or so? Dave. Uh, gobsmacked would be the word. Yes, I'm very surprised, but absolutely delighted to hear that two Michaels are on their way home and that this uh, chapter, at least this particular chapter, is closing for the better. So gobsmacked. I mean, I think a lot of people who aren't former diplomats may feel that way. So I'm curious as to why you feel that way. Is it because of the deferred prosecution agreement between the United States and Hmong, or was it how quickly Spavor and Kovrig were released by Beijing? No, I think the, the deferred prosecution agreement has been talked about since Donald Trump's time. So I think that, that we knew we were putting a lot of pressure on the Americans to move in that direction. And as the Prime Minister says, our diplomats, Washington, Beijing, and around the world with allies were, were putting pressure on the Biden administration. For their part, I think the Biden administration, and I do think we owe big, the Prime Minister owes big thanks to Joe Biden, who clearly put this up as a top priority. It would not surprise me that when he talked with, uh, with Secretary Xi Jinping last week that this was one of the things they, they discussed. But, but Biden has said to the allies that, that uh, he stands by them, and I think this fits into that piece of it. The fact that the two Michaels are on the plane, I mean, this is like out of a Len Dighton or a John le Carré novel. It reminds me of sort of the swaps you used to have with spies in the, in the Cold War. Uh, and the China, as you know, is up to now has said there's been no linkage between the two. But by by putting them on the plane tonight, they've clearly acknowledged that they that this was hostage taking, and that's something that we're going to have to be conscious of going forward. We've got this declaration of arbitrary detention, but I think now we've got to put teeth to this declaration because China, in one sense, may say this works, and we don't want to see this anymore. And so I think the West really is going to have to step and step up and go beyond a declaration and say, we're going to put sanctions now if you do this kind of thing in the past. This is a no-go zone. We're speaking to Colin Robertson, a former Canadian diplomat. And let's talk more about that, because I think that is a, a, a key point here. I think, you know, from a Western perspective, I think a lot of people today were thinking, you know, the Chinese aren't going to release these two prisoners right away, because it, it kind of proves what a lot of people here had been talking about openly for a long time, which was this, the imprisonment was not the result of due process or acting in good faith, but was simply retaliation for the detention of Meng Wanzhou. So why do you think the Chinese so quickly and, you know, released them and allows us to make the link this way? Uh, I think it says something about the way the, the government in China thinks about these things, but flesh that out for us a little bit. Sure, I think we're dealing with big geopolitics here. What we've seen in the last, since the Biden administration's to power, first of all, the alliance system coming back together. Uh, Biden saying, I'm for multilateralism, but the alliance is really important. And that's the one thing China doesn't have. They don't have allies. The West, we have allies. And we've seen the allies, you know, our, our both the ambassador and our deputy chief of mission, Jim Nickel, at the trials for Michael Spaver and Michael Kovrig, standing in solidarity with, the, with other Western nations saying you can't do this. That, that, I know the Chinese don't like this. They didn't like the, the letters from all the former diplomats, from the scholars saying that you don't do this. I think more importantly, in the last month, we've seen the, uh, the, the Quad, which is Japan, uh, Australia, India, and the United States as a kind of a military alliance, again, in Indo-Pacific. Indo We've also seen the creation, what, a week and a half ago of the uh, Australia, United Kingdom, United States alliance, which is now going to see Australia with nuclear submarines, again, to preserve freedom of navigation in the Indo-Pacific, but it's also seen as a threat to China. And I wouldn't surprise me if some of those around Xi Jinping said, you've gone one step too far. This wolf warrior diplomacy is not working for us. Look at the public opinion in the West. There's been a precipitous decline, not just in Canada, the United States, but throughout European countries, countries with which China trades. And as we go forward, I think that there are probably those in China who say to the to Xi Jinping, you know, maybe we maybe we should recalibrate. 
One last thing, uh, you use the term hostage diplomacy here and, uh, you know, I understand why. The two Canadians imprisoned uh, and then all of a sudden let go once uh, Meng Wanzhou was let go. Uh, we only have about 45 seconds left, but what are the implications here for the many Canadians who travel to China, who do business in China? Um, are, are they at risk in the future if Beijing is willing to practice this kind of, as you describe it, hostage diplomacy? Well, I think in one sense, the Chinese will think it worked for them. I Ming mean, Guangzhou has gone home. So I think we do have to be prudent going forward, which is, again, why I underline why we've got to, got to put teeth to this declaration arbitrary detention, because China will practice this again. They practice this through their history. We don't want to see them go back to this, but it's going to require solidarity on the part of the West. A big news day. And Colin Robertson, a former diplomat, uh, helping us understand that. Thank you very much for speaking with us this evening. You're welcome.